Hey, this is Brett the Hitman Heart. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. And you're listening to the Smack Raw Podcast. Hey, folks, welcome to the Smack Raw Podcast. Your one stop shop for all your WWE, AEW, and NXT recaps, reviews, pay per view predictions. Like always, it's Kyle here. Joining me today, we got Vince on camera. What's up, Vince? Yo, 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 what's up? Hey, man. Oh, dude, feeling feeling fresh. I got I to gotta tell got you. Got that uh, early morning grind going, man. <laughs> Shit. Oh, man, I knocked that out like an hour ago. Jesus, my kids were up at like six this morning. Like, yeah. uh, you know, like in the horror movies? When, like, you catch a glimpse of something just running across screen, just like, tick, 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 tick. like that was me opening my eyes at six, and my one year old had broken out of his room and just like ran across my doorway into the living room. So oh like, my yeah. gosh. I was like, it's gonna be one of those mornings. <laughs> the, the perks of parenthood, apparently. I'm telling man. you, man. He's gotta chase him down. He terrified um, our other son. Our other son's in his room crying. I'm trying to tell him everything's okay, but. <laughs> He doesn't care about me. He wants his mom. It's, oh, my gosh. Yeah, man. 6 a.m. It's like, thanks. Hey, man. man. I'm kind of in my lucky days. I don't have to deal with that just yet. <laughs> oh, man. It's worth it. But, yeah, dude, it's got its uh, it's got its got moments like just why. Like, oh. Please, oh, I please, bet. Please, why? Bet. <laughs> Trust me. I know. Oh, man. Hey, listen, guys. Uh, if you're new to the show, we are a pro wrestling podcast. I promise. Uh, you can find us on Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play Music, and iTunes. Of course, we're on YouTube, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We are creeping up on 100 subscribers where we will dole out some type of punishment to Vince no, here. No, no, yes, no. Yes, we're going to no, do it, Vince. Not, we're no, going to do it, something. No, no. No, I, there was there was no agreement to this. You just kind of threw it out there and just like let the world take over. No, I did not agree to these terms. I didn't sign no kind of contract. You can punish Jay, <laughs> use it for his punishment, use the 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 toe of death or whatever. Oh, it is that no, the toe of Satan. Oh, I can't toe wait for that. I can't wait for that. Which we have to record. We have to put on YouTube. Like, we oh have, yeah, like, that's what we're doing. That has to get some content <laughs> on here. Otherwise, it'd be considered hazing. Like, you know, I mean, <laughs> he kind of knew what he was getting into. Listen, man. No, we got to see Benji was on the show, and we had an agreement with Benji. But I feel like Benji brought you on the show. No, I want to say it was Benji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, because way... he he was he was quote unquote dead when I was brought on. Remember, you were the guy that followed Benji. So he came on, and then chronologically, you were added next. Benji no, has chronolog since... chronologically Kevin was next. <laughs> we're going chronological <laughs> order. Kevin was next, then it was me. <laughs> I'm doing everything I can to avoid this. 100, 100 subscribers, we punish Vince, okay? Like, no. <laughs> no. no. Oh, anyway, man. let's get to the show and forget about this punishment. <laughs> Listen, if you guys want to give us suggestions on how to punish Vince, hit us up on Twitter at SmackDrawPod, myself at the Kai Tai Show, and then Vince at SES Vince. We'll take oh, all man. submissions, man. Go ahead, drop them in the comments, hit us up on Twitter. Listen, the most gruesome and vile punishment. Stop vile. It. The fear factor. Vile. You are not Joe Rogan. We're not doing this. <laughs> we will get you. I'll oh, my God. Fly to Chicago myself, my friend. Yo, are those Funko Pops behind you? Yeah, I just got a whole mountain oh of them over there. Oh, my God, dude. That's a lot of Funko Pops. I don't know. I've never noticed that on your screen before. What else you yeah. got out there? What else you got? You got some action figures or... Yeah, I got like the like those like figures that came with the the slam, WWE slam crate. You know, like I have like uh, a foam finger in the back. What's the that's broken the finger? Is that intentional? Yeah, that's that. Uh, I got that at All In. You know, it's a uh, Marty Scurll broken. Marty Scurll. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, he still break yeah. fingers and stuff. Well, he still Sick, technically dude. does. I saw you got the Dragon Ball Z stuff up there, man. You play uh, you play uh, Kakarot yet? Yeah, no, out. I haven't gotten it. Uh, I've been waiting to see what the reviews and, and the hype was going to be about because mm -hmm. I remember I got Dragon Ball Ultimate Tenkaichi and it was a shit show. Yeah. yeah. It was like one of the worst video games I ever played. So, yeah. like, I'm kind of like iffy on video games. So, like, now, now I have to go ahead and just, like, <laughs> bide my time. <laughs> I, played, uh, I played Xenoverse 2. That was pretty fun. 
It was fun. I liked it. It was yeah. kind of like a little RPG thing. I like that you can create your own character. Yeah, that's And then cool. um, Fighter Z was a really good one because it felt just like a Tekken or a Street Fighter version of Dragon Ball Z, which is really fun. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, yeah, let's get into let's get into Monday Night Raw. Oh, okay, enough of the banter. Um, <laughs> Raw was hailing from where? Where was Raw from? Can, can, not Kentucky, Kansas. Kansas. Kansas, I think. I want to say no. That was last week. Last yeah, week was, was from Kansas. I don't know where Raw is from. Sorry, folks. I, I was driving. I was driving. My wife was yelling at me for being on my phone. I was like, well, I, like this is my job that I don't get paid for. I got to watch this. Okay. It's my excuse <laughs> every time. Um, but yeah, man, it was uh, overall, overall, uh, it was, it was a, a well paced show. It was a go home show for Royal Rumble, last Raw before Royal Rumble. Um, no. There was a lot of good. There was a lot of weird. Yeah. A lot of. A couple yeah. bad, not too much bad. Recently, Raw's been a pretty good show. Yeah, people have been arguing that Raw's must see again. Um, I don't know if we're quite there yet, but I mean, you got to look at the competition. You got to look at the competition. Say what you like about AEW. AEW, I think, is must see. NXT, must see. SmackDown, iffy. It's 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 fifty fifty. And then um, with the new deal signed with Marty Skrull staying with Ring of Honor, that's going to be uh, interesting. People are going to draw some eyes to that. NWA Power has been getting some buzz. Um, yeah. I haven't seen too much of New Japan, though. I haven't seen much of them. Uh, new Japan New Japan's my shit. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't had a chance to really like follow it consistently. But, mm-hmm. man, I, I'm never disappointed whenever I tune into a big show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, honestly, uh, like honestly, uh, I think it's just the the Paul Heyman effect, and then the superstar shakeup. I heard a report. I, I was watching on Stephen Larson. They were, they were saying that supposedly that like Seth was like like had a lot of pressure on him to like lead the locker room, be the leader of the locker room. But ever since the shakeup, they have AJ Styles, they have Randy Orton, yeah. they have guys like Rey Mysterio, people, other people that that like the rest of the roster respect and look to. <laughs> so it's like, so he's kind of like the star player. But it, like Seth Rollins, like kind of like the star player that was asked to do too much, and now he has like a secondary veteran. He added the veterans and the secondary all stars. So now he it's less pressure on him, and now he's able to perform. And he's yep. knocking out of the park right now. That's true. No, very, very true. Very true. Seth Rollins reminds me right now of Triple H when you still had Stone Cold, The Rock, Shawn Michaels, all of them. Mm-hmm. He was he was a main player, but you could name like four or five other guys that you felt were more significant than him. But with that being said, that might just prove that Seth Rollins out of the current landscape might have the most longevity. He might have the most legs Possibly. out of everybody. Um, oh, God damn. I almost fell out of my fucking chair. Uh, no, that would have been, <laughs> that would have made for great content. <laughs> great. Great. I just get the new camera. I'm fucking got me like busting my ass. Um, but yeah, man, uh, I like I liked Raw. There was there was some scary moments, man. That ladder match, oh boy, that started to go south, didn't it? Uh, yeah, that was really going south at some points. And it start. It doesn't help that the very first ladder spot um, was a semi botch, and you had Andrade like land practically on his neck on the ladder. Oh my god. Oh man, it was it was nuts, but. Uh, What's going on over there? Uh, sorry. Uh, I thought my uh, laptop ch- uh, charger was connected at the moment. It's oh. not. It's about to die on me. So oh, shit, by yeah. all means, carry on. Carry on. <laughs> I guess we'll start off the show. I don't think we're actually going to go beat for beat today. But we might as well. The show, right. the beginning of the show really did set up for a huge angle later on. Uh, Seth Rollins and his newly formed faction with AOP and buddy murphy all come out you know how you know how you can tell they're bad guys how because they're all dressed just just blacked out man like no color (laughs) in sight just okay one one thing that i'm gonna just like it's just a little nitpick is like like buddy murphy has been with the faction for uh, less than a week now he's and he's already got the whole like aesthetic of the faction down and seth rollins refuses to wear a suit yeah i'm over here like seth just put on the goddamn suit. I know you're gonna you make suits. of all your all your freaking um, everybody else got to wear them. You got to wear them. Seth. Yeah, exactly. Come on, man. Let's spruce up. Like suit up. Like Barney Stinson in uh, How Much Your Mother. Suit up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, but overall, like I, I, 
Yeah, the aesthetic is pretty good, man. They already got it down. Like, it feels mm -hmm. perfect. I saw some people on Twitter, a couple mutuals called, since there's no name for them, they started calling it the outer circle. So that's that's something right now. They're like like uh, a specific follower. I can't remember her name. But uh, she was saying that, uh, oh, I'm going to keep calling them the outer circle until they get a national name. Until they get a name? Yeah. Yeah, because right now the closest thing they have is the Monday Night Messiah and his disciples, which that doesn't really roll off. Yeah, no, nah, it doesn't really roll. It, no, it no. makes for a great movie title, but <laughs> in terms yeah. of action name, <laughs> nah. Now, um, Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens come out to confront him, uh, Seth and his disciples, while they're just running down the crowd. and Not really running down the crowd, just doing this whole false face thing. Like, I'm the man who I am today because of the fans. Thank you. Right. But it's all disingenuous. Um, but uh, Kevin Owens uh, and Samoa Joe come out pretty much just a challenge to a fight and then just announce that they're taking part in the Royal Rumble uh, after the fight is accepted you have uh, the Viking Raiders come out and I'm like thinking damn I'd like to see that become a faction like <laughs> the Raiders uh. KO and granted the personalities everybody is so so different but dude, all the beef. That's all I could keep posting online last night is look yeah, at all I that saw beef. The gift. <laughs> like look at all this beef. I, I saw it. I saw it, man. Yeah, there was the theme to to your tweeting last night. Oh, I'm telling you, man. I loved it, bro. I was like, yes. So, dude. quick question. Quick question. Uh, I saw a lot of people like like just bashing on it or just complaining in general. I didn't have an issue with it personally. But what do you think of like Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins being the ones to challenge for the titles and then getting instead the of AOP? Off? Instead of AOP. That's that's what blew my mind. Yeah, so you had the brawl break out, and then shortly afterwards, Seth Rollins is confronted backstage by one of the interviewer bots. And, <laughs> uh, and she asks him, you know, how do you feel about everything that just transpired? Whatever, whatever. And it, it just culminated him. We're going to challenge them to a tag team title match tonight. And it's me and Buddy Murphy. Dude, right before he said it, I was like, oh, cool. AOP finally gets the belts. And no, it's Seth. And I, dude, the first thought I uh, I had in my mind uh, was, well, fuck AOP, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, they don't. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Um, they don't need the belts. They don't need the belts. Seth, Seth needs a title on him. AOP doesn't need the titles. It's the same right. reason why you... in inner circle when they inter introduce like a mid card championship you'll probably never see that on jake hager if inner circle still a thing because he doesn't It'd need probably one. go on Guevara if anything exactly right a guy with more shine personality wise and and needs a spotlight whereas aop are kind of like the enforcers you don't need to yeah. put belts on your enforcers so i'm not mad at it but yeah my first impression was like well swerve because everybody and their parents were convinced that AOP would be the ones to take yeah. the belts off of um, off of uh, the Viking Raiders, and no, it's the newly formed tag team, which is a spoiler, I guess. But uh, yeah, the newly I mean, if formed. If you're watching the show, it's a spoiler, man. Yeah. I mean, if, what what if you haven't watched the show? What are you doing watching the Raw <laughs> recap show? Come on, <laughs> exactly. Like, you, you know what? Catch you're up, doing. man. Catch up. Exactly. Um, I saw a lot of people complaining, saying that like, oh, it's a WWE thing where like non tag teams always get tag team titles and it is regular true. tag. Team and it's like, I, I get it, I get it, but sometimes you get some of the best pairings like that, or you get some stories like that. Like, I didn't think the Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins thing worked out, but stuff like John Cena and Shawn Michaels being champions at the same time, I felt like worked out. You know, I mean, John Cena and David Otunga were champions at one point. So this the point I was trying to make is, like, they might have the titles and transition them over to AOP because back back in the days of the Nexus, it was David Otunga and, and John Cena that were tag team champions and dropped it over to the same Nexus members in basically a finger poke with Doom situation Ooh. where they dropped it to Heath Slater and Justin Gabriel and David Otunga had to take the pin. So it might be a thing like that where maybe they have Buddy Murphy test out his allegiance or they just hold on to the titles for a minute yeah. and they drop it, drop the titles, and then AOP recovers, you know, like in, in some sort of revenge angle. Um, right now, I think it's more of a they want to establish Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins and the group as a as a co cohesive unit. Yeah. And having Murphy and Seth being on the same page, they were celebrating like schoolgirls when they won the titles, which I thought was great. And like you were saying, Seth does need a title on him right now if he's going to be this Messiah of Raw, and he's not going to get the U.S. title. Andrade just had it. 
just yeah. got in. They have plans for him. And obviously, with Brock being champion, no one can come near that title on this uh, major big four pay-per-view. And you know the other thing, too, is mm-hmm. um, what's really intriguing. Now, whether or not WWE leans into this is right. another story. But what are Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy known for individually? Putting on great fucking matches, man. True. And True. if you got these guys in a tag team, I'm sure these guys can gel. And I bet you oh, yeah. they could be if if they lean into like not screwball finishes, cowardly heel stuff. If they just lean into they like captured lightning in a bottle, and these guys actually are an insanely good tag team. I could definitely see that. They're I mean, fast. that tag match was really good. Like, yeah. it set aside the interruptions from Joe, Kevin Owens, and AOP. Once they were both banned from ringside, uh, it got down to like a really good like tag match. I was really into the tag match. And like you were saying, they're both great wrestlers and they can make this work. Like yeah. Buddy Murphy is a former tag team champion. So is Seth Rollins. If you're a tag team wrestler, SSR has proved to us, mm-hmm. once a tag team wrestler, always a tag team wrestler. You can make it work. You just Hell have to have some kind of like chemistry, something that clicks. And they've already, like, I felt that chemistry they had last week when he joined them. So I feel like it's there. People are complaining right now, but here's the thing: who's going to put on a better match? Buddy, the team of Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins or AOP? Just like you were saying, very... they're probably the, they're probably going to put on better matches, and then AOP is probably going to get the titles down the line. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Um, other things that had people complaining. We'll we'll dive into the other non-controversy but still everybody's got their circles the mm-hmm. Kyrie Sane and Becky Lynch match got a lot of people well a lot of the Kyrie Sane fans and Eero <laughs> Shirai fans man poking the hornet's nest um okay see, I didn't actually see this what was this about <laughs> so you got every time I've seen so you know the tag team of Asuka and Kyrie Sane Kyrie takes the pins and right. then in singles matches, Kyrie loses. You know, Asuka's obviously the dominant force. But I've, I, I don't know if it's just, you know, the people that follow me or I, I'm subsequently following. But I like these, like, Io Shir- Shirai fans and Kyrie Sane fans, I've noticed the most. And this is, maybe I'm overgeneralizing, but they take their girls losing the hardest, I swear, than most uh, fans do. And so I don't know, like, I get it. I, you can't. It's not like Asuka needs to be eating pins mm-hmm. right now. You know what I mean? Right. We're still trying to... Rec- she's going for the world title. Are you, gonna, are you really going to have Kyrie Sane go out there and beat Becky Lynch? You know? No. Uh, uh, I know what you're talking about. I see it a couple. Like, I have the specific... Uh, like, I have a couple. Yeah, you're right. Like, Io Shirai, Kyrie Sane. I think it stems from the fact that back in stardom, they were like the two... They were the rock and stone cold with the stardom. And they come uh, to they come they, so imagine Rock and Stone Cold being who they are in the Attitude Era, and then immediately going to New Japan and being like mid card guys or not being booked properly. Okay. So, so that's that's kind of where like that's the best way I can put it because they were the Rock and Stone Cold of stardom. They were like two of the biggest names there, and you saw what Kyrie can do in NXT. And a lot of people to this day feel like she didn't get a justifiable run because she won the title off of Sheena and then dropped it to Sheena again. Io Shirai has yet to win the title. They feel like she, they've been underutilizing them to the, to their fullest. And to a certain extent, they've underutilized a lot of the Japanese wrestlers. Shinsuke Nakamura should be one of the, your top guys on SmackDown, and he's just in a whatever faction with Sami Zayn and Cesaro. So I get where it comes from, but it's just one of those, like, just, just chill, just as you know, as Naito would say, tranquilo, you know, just like it'll be okay. Um, yeah, it, it happens. It's weekly TV, that's part of Raw <laughs> Smackdown. It's weekly TV. You're gonna take some L's, there's gonna be some episodes where you feel like your specific favorite wrestler isn't being used properly. I mean, for crying out loud, Ricochet came out, got kicked in the dick, and was looked like a schmuck on Raw. Well, listen, listen now, in WWE's defense, he kind of is a schmuck. All right. No. The, the, see, see, here's the, the, the ricochet. The ricochet Ron, Ron train Ron is Ron over. Ron ricochet. The way they book him is kind of like a very cheesy. He they book him kind of like Neville when he was first uh, when he was first on Raw before he turned heel and joined the Cruiserweight division. If you remember, he had kind of like this superhero gimmick where like they even like did specific like cartoonish like cart. A comic book type. Dude, uh, it comes like, out to a comical like bullet ricochets. 
That's that's all Vince. And here's the thing. Back in back in NXT, he's so yeah, like, stupid. It, it is, man. It is. But what, what, what can you what can you do, man? No, uh, man? It's just one of those things where I feel like it's just basically like his packaging on he Raw. Just, he goes to bed at night and he has flashbacks of signing that contract, and he just wishes he could go back in time and just like jump on that table and tear that shit up and be like, no. Go back to Lucha Underground. Go to anywhere else other than main roster. Well, yeah, it's just one of those things where, like, I felt like uh, NXT was making using him in a way where he just came off as cool. He yeah. just had like this cool aura about him. I mean, I mean, you can say the same thing for Alistair Black with like the creaking door sound in the start of his entrance. At least and the- th- that. Okay, so I'm not going to defend it, but I will say if you compare the two, that one is technically more subtle. You know, like, but both of them silly yeah. as hell. They both it's, fall in the uh, same category. Uh, but it's also a thing like they changed up Ricochet's whole entrance and everything. Like, they took they, out the I saw the little backflip thing. I was like, oh, that's cool. Just do that for your entrance. Don't do all the extra stuff you do. It's like his entrance was solid. His theme song was solid. He was one of the most well like packaged guys in terms of like theme songs and entrances. It's just, it's one of those things where it's like, Vince once he like, breaks ah, through that, no, he once is, he breaks a, through that, he's a he's a superhero. All right, he's going yeah, to once... <laughs> uh, Here's the thing: we, we should be counting our lucky stars. He's not wearing a cape like Neville was forced to wear. A cape well, he fell on his face. <laughs> you can't wear that stupid ass. Thing. Wait, actually, I think he, he did was wear a wearing... cape. He did wear a cape, and he fell on his damn face. But that was more of his like special occasion gear that he wears. I don't think it was like necessarily yeah, thought, meant to be a cape. Maybe, maybe I. I... Um, my memory ain't the best, but I thought that's just how they started him. And then he did that backflip one time, landed on his mm-hmm. head, and they were like, okay, no capes. <laughs> they just... Right. So, no, I mean, going back to Kyrie Zane, it's like, it's okay that she took the loss. Uh, and I don't think it's going to hurt her in the long run. She's not booked to be any top, like, like top figure, top player in the women's division just yet. I think she will get to that point. And I think you get that way, you get there through a, a Kyrie Zane Oscar feud down the line. I don't mm-hmm. think it's come on. Look, it's Becky Lynch. She's the man. She's they gotta further this feud somehow, and they've done every trope you can do. They but did they're... the contract sign in. They did tag matches. They've done everything they can kind of do. You have to kind of do the thing where like, oh, like an associate of the guy that I'm facing at the pay per view. That's what I'm facing. Just carry exactly. the feud over. It's yeah. like. It, it's, it probably how doesn't it, help. How... My source was the Black Lotus Two, Kyrie Sane, Io Shirai, and Oscar fan page. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that page exactly. might be a little biased. I'm just saying, <laughs> just, just a tad bit, just a tad yeah. bit. But uh, yeah. yeah, so I think it'll be okay. Um, I'm kind of intrigued now with this whole like Oscar booking. It kind of feels like I wouldn't be surprised if they scrap like Shayna Baszler going for the title if that was indeed the plan, and they go ahead and do like a trilogy with uh oscar and to have oscar take the title off of becky and have her chase the title again at wrestlemania or yeah. or maybe you know becky loses to oscar and then she loses to oscar again at wrestlemania i know i know i'd be stoked to see that you know i'm i'm just excited because this is the best they've booked oscar since before she lost her streak to charlotte right yeah it's uh it is it is uh becky lynch is uh to thank for a lot of that too um, Becky yeah. Lynch is carrying those promos, which I have no problem with. Um, with no, Oscar and Kyrie Sane being allowed to cut promos in Japanese. In fact, I prefer it, man. I don't care. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, what I about- mean, you go back to NXT and they were forcing Andrew Garza on commentary talking English and just wasn't clicking. And then once he started talking to Spanish, I knew exactly what he was saying and it still kind of felt a little bit awkward. But I'm pretty sure to people that don't know Spanish or know very little Spanish, it's like, oh, see, this is way better. He sounds way better now. He sounds cool now. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's just one of those things. They, as a as a guy that's bilingual, mm-hmm. even though Spanish technically is my first language, I like English is more of my first language. I'm more comfortable speaking English. A lot of like bilingual people or people that just like have a different language that they started off with, other than English, they're just more comfortable. You get the best out of them, and like even Shinsuke when he was doing the whole I don't speak English thing that was perfect because it was just little English and then he was squeezing in a little Japanese in there and it's perfect yeah man uh since we touched on Ricochet we'll go ahead and cover all of that uh fresh off of becoming one of the largest bastards ever f5ing <laughs> our truth our national right. treasure uh <laughs> Paul Heyman and 
uh, Brock Lesnar come out to add nothing new to the product other than just their appearance fee. And um, I don't even remember anything about the promo. I don't. Because it's all the same. Our truth yeah. said it best, man. He's, you talk a lot, Paul. <laughs> no, I love Paul. He's the best He's the best promo guy in the business. It's, it's not his fault that he has to cut promos for Brock uh, pretty much every seven days. Um, but they come yeah, out. it's usually the same thing. <laughs> it is the same thing. It ain't, it ain't usually it is. <laughs> um, uh, they come out. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to shit on it. I'm just really trying to add something, try to make it captivating. Although it really was one of the lesser captivating moments of the whole night, because you yeah. saw it was you're following our truth, confronting Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. Okay, that no one's gonna look cool there. So Ricochet comes out while they're in the ring. Ricochet says something along the lines, "I'm not scared of Brock. I'll fight him right here." And then I missed the part because my wife actually cut the TV off. I was mad. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, you said he got kicked in the dick. So I don't know if it was intentional or if that was the point. So basically, uh, like you were saying, he's like, hey, I'll fight Brock Lesnar right now. And then he just brushes him off. He starts to walk away like he's not even worth his time. And then he's like, oh, you're scared, Brock. You're scared. And he comes in. He turns around, gets into the ring, kicks him in the gut or in dick. And then ricochet just flops like a fucking i'd like to think it's the dick <laughs> like, the and, but here's the here's the thing like it's one of those things where like you made him look like like a dingus man well he, he already looks like... does look like one that's the thing no, man he... nah, Dude, man you See, are he... alone on this ricochet train bro everyone's done with him he's yesterday new he's washed up he's done throw him out man we're good not even me me and sebastian are still firmly behind ricochet i'm pretty yeah. sure kevin still supports the guy i look i'm not done with him <laughs> Uh, I think he's pretty good. He's not the best on the mic, but look at a lot of the wrestlers on main roster. Yeah. They're not the best on the mic. Something that could help him is maybe a heel run because he in New Japan, he was like King Ricochet and he had this whole heel persona and he can't pull it off. And I think he might be a little bit more natural to it. And yeah. even in, in, in he uh, does look Lucha like he could be smug or cocky. You know, that, yeah, um, he looks scary in Lucha Underground as Prince Puma. That mask did a lot for him. Like, yeah. there's no way I thought, like, a handsome-looking guy was under that mask. Like, no. like just... Yeah, yeah. it's just one of those things where, like, here's the thing. I didn't even knew he was black. I thought he was, like, Puerto Rican or Mexican or something. You uh, know, I didn't... Back then, I didn't knew that Lucha Underground was just grabbing, like, legit good wrestlers and decided, hey, we're, like, a Lucha Libre show, so put on a mask and get a different yeah. name. So, yeah, we, I mean... We need everyone here to look the part, okay? like Exactly. So, yeah. it's, like... So I didn't knew that going in. It was like one of those things where you discover as you're watching the show. But I'm not, uh, I just, here's the thing. Like, Ricochet's already in a bad spot. And you go ahead and do that with him. You're going to, like, eventually jo like push him down to, like, Cedric Alexander territory. Where Dude, he's just he's irrelevant. There. He's there. Man. I don't, th I think he he's is. slightly above it. I think he's slightly above that but right now. But does that say much? Does that say much you're slightly above Cedric Alexander territory? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I think slightly above Cedric, I think you're still in the t uh, U.S. title picture. I can see him feuding with Andrade down the line and... No, what that, like, what that does is you still get people like holding out hopes, like in a football game when someone's down by like thirty points with six minutes. You're like, well, you know, if they score like a touchdown and get an onside kick three times in a row, they still got a shot. Like, dude, no, hey, it's... hey it happens. It happens sometimes. <laughs> the it curtain. Happens, okay? <laughs> it oh, is the don't... curtain call on Ricochet, son. Okay. Nah, not yeah. that, like I'm, I'm sick. I'm sick of the. I'm sick of the slander. Uh, All right. I then just, I... I'll tell you one curtain call that's happening, and that is Matt Hardy's uh, business with WWE. Jeez. If anybody uh, doesn't look like they're being punished for not re-signing, it's Matt Hardy. Now I could be talking out my ass. Everything yeah. I'm reading, that dude is done, and the writing's yeah. on the wall because he's being booked like he's on the way out too. Yeah, it's. it's I saw a lot of people complaining that he jobbed to Eric Rowe, and it's like they, they only have so many wrestlers that they're gonna put in a situation where they're gonna job to Eric Rowan, and Eric Rowan can only like he ran through like every single and like like jobber that you can think of. At this point, he's he's reached the point where he's destroying. Uh, main roster talent there in the low totem pole of you know yeah. the locker room and unfortunately for Matt tier. Hardy he's well, in the bottom tier I think that's I think that's what people's issue is not that he's jobbing to Eric Rowan but obviously he's being positioned as bottom tier main roster um 
it's it's like he's one step away from not receiving TV time. It's like the only people below him he wasn't are like, receiving TV time like up Eric until a Young. Weeks ago. Yeah, no, I exactly. And and like I said, I, I, just pure speculation. He just to me, it strikes me as he's being booked as someone who's probably made it clear he's out the door, and you know, just trying to lower his stock, build up Rowan. He's doing the job. It's what you do. Right. It's what you do. Um, but yeah, Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy eats a pinfall to uh, Rowan in a, in a pretty much in a squash match. Rowan yeah. gets bit by his uh, King is saying it's Jake the Snake, Robert's Snake, or it's a snake. I think um, he was saying it was just a snake. A but snake. Jerry the King Lawler just. I don't think he said it because it's something that's going to play into storyline. He just says what's ever in his goddamn mind. He doesn't. You. There's there's no no continuity that he's trying to like establish there. They tell him just pretty much, hey, listen, if we chime in, do tell the jokes that we feed you. Otherwise, just do the king, do your king <laughs> shtick. Right. You know, just just exactly. avoid avoid puppies. You know, like right. Probably, um, probably has a meeting every day to avoid avoid um, objectifying women blatantly. Like, yeah, listen, we got so... Corey Graves for that. Corey Graves is good at that. Okay. It's like, that's his. <laughs> okay. <deal. laughs> Corey Graves shots. I'm here for them. Okay. Um, but going back to my heart real quick before we transition, it's like, it's one of those things where it's it's wrestling. It's a little bit silly to think this way, but it's he's a different different Matt Hardy. So this current iteration of Matt Hardy isn't the broken slash broken Matt Hardy. And this one can obviously job to like uh, an Eric Rowan because he doesn't have that cachet. It's kind of like uh, in, in, like in the anime that you see or like any like TV show, you, they hit this switch and then now they're like they're a different person because they've reached this different level or entity or whatever. So that's that's kind of the way I see it. Wrestling's kind of weird in that kind of way where like you can't take it like so like like black and white sometimes you gotta like see the gray area and things and you never know like you you saw like people were complaining that they weren't really using matt hardy and that they were doing just a random ass match and that he was so suddenly broken and then woken again it's just one of those things where people want to see the broken woken character but i don't know how long how long of a longevity longevity that whole character had i feel like that that needs aew um aew's loose uh, are there more creative, uh, yeah. creatively loose? That will um, thrive stories. more in AEW. But yeah. Again, like it's just a question. I'm not saying it will. I'm just. But here's a question: How similar would that be to the Dark Order or the Nightmare Collective in terms of another faction? Of a, if he start, if he starts this whole Hardy like uh, House Hardy thing again, Kinda yeah, like he I was know. Doing an impact. And it's one of those things where like. The broken Woken stuff was really, really good, but towards the tail end of his impact run, I was kind of getting. Well, done it was with 2016 it. as well. We're four years later, where yeah. we can't really be shocked by it, and it's just kind of going back. There's no easy answer, but um, this this alliteration of Matt Hardy definitely uh, is definitely the what I refer to as the collecting a paycheck. Matt Hardy is what yeah. this is what this alliteration is. <laughs> Go yeah. out there. Count, uh, go ahead, look at the lights, and, and then get your paycheck on the way back, man. Hey, man, if if nobody's out here feeling sorry for Ricochet, I don't feel sorry for Matt Hardy one bit. <laughs> That's the way I see it. I, I don't have... feel sorry for him, man. He's a, he's a vet. You I know what I mean? I don't feel sorry he's for Matt around. whatsoever. It's nah, like, man. He knows what it is. Yeah, I mean, he knows. He kind of knew what he was signing up yeah, for. It's at, like... least, at least Matt Hardy has already reached legend status, something yeah. that Ricochet is never going to sniff. Um Moving on. <laughs> okay, I don't want to hear you jumping on the Ricochet bandwagon in like two years when he's our Universal Champion. Okay. <laughs> oh Jesus. <dude. laughs> anyway, I'll, moving on. Moving I'll on. Be on but I told you guys, just be patient. <laughs> just. Whatever. Um, you see, I'm knocking out the little segments. I'm saving up for the good ones. Alistair Black comes out and arguably sets a record, if not ties a record. Nothing official here. Knocks a dude out with Black Mass in three seconds, if that. It was about the length of the Conor McGregor and Cowboy Cerrone fight. Um, no, no, no. He smoked Conor McGregor in terms of time. <laughs> just do you think, okay, here, here's the thing. The WWE likes to do this weird thing where they play off of stuff that happened over, or, oh, over in, other, in other areas. Do you think they did this just because, like, oh, you know, Conor, Conor McGregor, look at Alistair Black. 
I could see that. I could def- I'm not going to say yes or no, but I've, I, you definitely have seen stuff happen in other sports. Mm-hmm. Um, and then immediately it's picked up on by WWE and they do their own version. Same thing with like pop culture memes and stuff that just happens in general. WWE. Speaking of uh, them doing their own version of stuff, they re- recreated the whole uh, Saturday Night Live chick again with the Street Profits. That's you know, the, I'm digging that. The week. Uh, um, the Monday after the weekend update. I love it. I dig it. I, Sebastian was saying it didn't really hit home to him, but I think it's good. It's like, it's one of, it's, it, here's the thing. It beats them just being like randomly backstage. This means they have their own segment, their own thing, the whole bit with our truth. Like, it's like, hey, like, we, we, like you, you said you wanted to talk, you wanted me to talk about Houston. It's like, no, no truth. I say we want you to talk via from Houston, like talk to us from Houston. It's like, it's a whole like little things, <laughs> little subtle things. Like the, I like how uh, Angela Dawkins was saying, like, "Oh, we hate reruns, we hate recasts. Like, it's it sucks. Why can't we have any original content?" And they cut to the still image of Miss and Morrison being back together. It's yes, it's, it's great. Yes, it's great. And uh, the first one was way better than this one, just because of the facial reactions from Monte's Ford. But I think this works. I yeah. think this plays off of who they are as characters. Yes, I'd like to see them wrestle a little bit more. But this is good. This beats them just being the Muppets uh, recap guys <laughs> every week, you know. Uh, my, uh, my 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 thing is like I actually now I'm not a huge SNL fan, uh, mainly just because like I I watch TV to avoid politics and you know they lean really heavy into their political humor and that's their thing. Yeah. So that's nothing new. But my favorite thing whenever I do tune into SNL is the Weekend Update. Um, and I don't mind parodies. I'm actually, I've been a fan of parodies my whole life. I remember I was like a, such a weird middle schooler where I actually had like weird owl tracks on my burned CDs. And you were one of those guys. Yeah. I was one of those guys. I would actually listen to like funny music. I don't know, man. It probably explains my personality a bit, but so, but no, no, but going back to that, I like parodies. Um, yeah. And this this is cool to me. I got I got no issues. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's the funniest thing I've ever seen, but it tickles me personally. Um, I uh, I thought it was kind of funny when they were doing the backstage interview between Charlotte and they was like, yeah, like last year I lost the title to some, I lost the Royal Rumble to someone, and then Becky Lynch just creeps up. She's yeah. like, <laughs> and then they, that that was it. That, that was, was her it. bit. That was her bit. I love that bit. <laughs> she was out of frame. Good. Um, yeah, man. Uh, one of one of the matches that did not get changed uh, from it being announced was Drew McIntyre taking on Randy Orton. I was convinced we were going to get a uh, AJ Styles hitting an RKO on Randy Orton out of nowhere. I, in fact, I would have preferred that to the booking of this. But I will say, I will say that Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre have awesome chemistry in the ring. I really, yeah. I really like their dynamic. I don't know if I would like them as a tag team. I think I do like their dynamic strictly as a feud um, between the two. And I do like the idea that Randy Orton is going to be the guy that elevates Drew McIntyre. I think that's... Hopefully. I Hopefully think that's, that's what... that's Yeah, what that's what... Proje- I mean, that's how they're playing it. I would hate to see Drew McIntyre saying that he's not going to fall for Randy's tricks anymore and this and that just for Randy to go over because then Drew McIntyre just... Slides right back down, you know, and um, no, Drew. Hey, Mc- you're talking about Ricochet. Drew McIntyre is gonna hit that level soon if he keeps doing that. No, but- dude, Drew McIntyre is like our future WWE champion by end of 2019. That dude will have the gold. 2019 is too late for that. But- 2020. Oh god, fucking old man. Oh Jesus, I'm that sad Brock now. Lesnar holds on to that title. But here's a, okay. So I saw a lot of people praising the post match promo that Drew had. Yeah, and praising the match itself. I'm just gonna be that guy and say, I didn't care for the match too much, just because I've maybe I've seen this combination. Here's the thing. There's just something about Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre has to be in there with someone that I care about in order for me to be fully invested. If he's been in, if he's in the match with someone I've already seen him with. Even though it's probably going to be an amazing match, I'm probably not going to care. I'm not going to be too invested. And in the three-hour show, your mind, in it, it, by itself, instinctively is going to find something. Man, didn't you, like, didn't you like uh, Aleister Black and Buddy Murphy? All their matches. Come on now. Yeah, don't, but that was be, something that be I did. Don't be biased over here. Don't be no, biased. No, okay. 
okay, look. You just Mr. mad because they're both Rich tall. Hater over here. They're both tall. Okay. No, no it's, it's not. That. Look, okay. Which Randy Orton, I'm not too invested in anything that Randy Orton does too often because I, yeah. for the most part, I know that he's just going to put on a decent to solid match depending on how invested and motivated he is for the program. That that's but that's my whole thing. It's just I'm not too invested in like what they're continuing to do with uh, Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. I feel like I've seen this way too many times, even though I'm probably wrong here. The match, like 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 I said, my brain just in- instinctively just picked this match to just say nope, we're tuning out. So I tuned out for the most of this match. Uh, it was pretty good. I, I was looking up uh, uh, from my phone. I was looking up a couple times. I did get up a couple times, but when I was coming back, the match was good. I didn't like the post-match beatdown. I thought it, it was dumb because AJ Styles and the club are coming out here, and they look like a couple of dinguses that they can't take care of two guys. Yes. And then they just go running away with the tails t- tucked between their legs. And I thought the promo from McIntyre, I didn't think it hit the spot. I didn't think it hit for me. I didn't think it did anything for me. I don't think... Like people are like, oh, it's such an impassioned promo. It's such so good. Like he says things with such conviction. It's like I didn't care. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just didn't care. Like it. Drew McIntyre is slowly reaching a uh, uh, Braun Strowman level for me, where like I was very excited for him, but because they haven't pulled the trigger on him with anything they've done, either an icy title run, a main title run. What's that? What What are we looking at? Oh, <laughs> the Mori thing. I can't. I can't read the thing. Man. Uh, it says the results say this bitch is crazy. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but look, man. He's, like again, not knocking Drew McIntyre because I like the guy. But Dude, Drew McIntyre is the future champ, like face of the company. Weren't we saying that like two years ago? Yeah. Weren't we saying that last year? Yeah. Weren't we last year? We were saying the same thing. Oh, by the end of the year, he's going to be a world champion. Man. Twenty eighteen was like, oh, watch when he gets the main roster, he's, they're going to strap the title on him. The only success, like s- continuing success, he's had was in NXT as champion. When he came over to Raw, like he's he gets thrust into like faction after faction. He was into like a random ass group with Dolph Ziggler. Then he was paired up with Braun. Then he's not. Then he's feuding with Dolph. Then he was with Baron Corbin and, and Bobby Lashley. Then he's not doing anything. Then it's just it's there's no there's nothing with right now. He's getting really close to me not caring about him. Just like I don't care for Braun Strowman anymore. I don't dislike Braun Strowman, but he's on my screen. I just don't care. They could put the Man. title on him tomorrow, and I won't care. Oh, and, that hurts. and Drew McIntyre is not. I'm talking about Braun, by the way. I'm not talking about Drew. If they put the title on Drew him. tomorrow, I'd care. But a lot of people are saying like, "Oh, they want to see Drew versus Brock." I'm like, I don't. I don't want to see Drew versus Brock. I'm not invested in that match. I would. I would definitely. I, I'm not. All, I would be all about it, especially well, unless unless Brock was booked to win. If Brock beat him, hell no. Yeah, I'd be like, this is this is an effing waste. Also, too, Brock has kind of like a tendency. Like, he has a track record. If he's matched up with someone about his size, usually it's not going to be the best of matches. Like, even with Samoa Joe, I don't think he even... They had a really solid seven-minute match, but that was mostly Joe. Well, I don't know. I would say the Brock and Roman had good chemistry, and Roman's one of the larger fellas that Brock is very I think maybe the only exception to the rule I would say is WrestleMania 31 when mm-hmm. they were in they had their first feud I thought that match was really really good yeah their other matches uh, left left I want to see like I want to see like a dude that's like well because what's gonna have to do is the guy that's built like Brock or, or as large as him needs to actually look like he can hurt him that's a thing like Braun Strowman just got steamrolled it's not like Braun had no offense but if you yeah. got if you got a big dude that when he hits Brock and Brock looks dazed and is like, oh shit, this guy's got sledgehammers, then we're talking a different story. Like when Kane dropped Brock with a head kick, mm-hmm. it's unfortunate that he got tapped out like immediately afterwards. But it looks good when Brock actually sells a beating. Um the, it's, it's crazy to think that he sold more for Rey Mysterio than he did for Braun Strowman. That's true. But someone who doesn't need to sell a beating would be uh, actually Rey Mysterio and Andrade in their uh, United States ladder match. First I was waiting for this championship was, was, ladder match in 13 years to take place on Raw. And it shows why. Because um, this match was... was uh, just, just out of curiosity, I'm not sure if, like, if I'm correct, but the only last ladder match that i can think of that took place on raw would it be i that like undertaker jeff hardy in this bit of title oh, match or no. would it be like no, Eddie that, was versus... that was like jesus that was 
What about Eddie versus Rob Van Dam for the IC title when that one fan jumped the the ring and like almost killed Eddie by pushing the ladder over? Was that the last ladder match? That's what I'm trying to think. Uh, like, cause it'd be it'd be kind of funny that the last uh, ladder title match was an Eddie match, and ironically, now you have like two of the better like luchadors in WWE right now. Uh, it's I'm trying to look it up right if now. If not, if not, I don't know why I'm picturing John, not John Morrison. I'm picturing Johnny Nitro in the back of my head. If not, that's what I'm picturing right now. Um, Intercontinental Championship match. Oh wait, no, that's not a ladder. It's hard to say. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. We'll get back to you guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I'll look it up while you talk through this match. This guys, match, uh, this match was like a semi botch fest. God, man, I was so let down by this match, but not, not because I was like, oh, this match is is crap. I'm like, dude, these guys are almost killing each other, and it just, I think it went downhill from the first spot from from. Andrade receiving that Huracurana where he was supposed to land on the ladder. You know, like snapped his neck on it instead. From Jeez. there, every single ladder spot, with the exception of the finish. I thought the finish was even kind of sloppy because I was watching with my sister. And she well, the said, Hammerlock DDT, was that landed flush. But Everything he, he, else was off. The thing that she was saying is like that... That didn't look right because the way maybe it's the camera angle or whatever it looked like andrade took the blunt of that punishment and ray barely grazed like an edge of it and it just fell to the side the way it was executed it looked and it came off like andrade took like the blunt of that damage and that's what she was saying I'm like that looked like it hurt andrade more than ray you know i mean i would believe it i'd absolutely believe it man um... it's kind of like uh when people do like a tombstone power driver to the outsider or on steel steps it's like that hurts undertaker way more than it does anybody else <laughs> yeah it's true um yeah the damn it i can't find nothing man every all the articles just want to talk about last night's um why the hell was i losing my phone i got a computer right here jesus i don't know man i don't know what's going our, on uh, this our lead uh lead producer ladies and gentlemen i'm telling you i'm telling you you see it right huh I said you're probably right. It was uh, a little disappointing in the sense that uh, you were expecting like a barn burner from them because usually for the most part you put them in the match and you, just, you know you just yeah they them. got insane chemistry. Yeah, I think it's just one of those one of those cases where it's like the ladder is just like it just well, wasn't their night. It, they everything that could go wrong went wrong and it just mm -hmm. happened. And they tried to solve. Grant like given I mean, you all had, this luckily stuff. luckily you had Zelina Vega for them to pan to. Because they use that as a crutch often. <laughs> like, yeah. my wife was talking like, what the hell is she wearing? And I was like, who cares? All right, listen now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, no, uh, the, the match, it was, it, was a, it was a great match. It just, you know, damn, Rey Mysterio is up there in age, and Andrade is a promising guy. Uh, and then you see these dudes landing on their neck. Um only one man only one move was like botched which was that sunset flip bomb ray went to do and it doesn't look like anybody hurt themselves the just the move didn't connect right right but the dude with the ray dangling from the from that the title like up on the rope and then coming down for that hurricanrana just fell onto his head like that's all that would happen he just fell on his damn head and, and I want him to be a little bit more careful, man, because I want him to, like, run. I know he was teasing that he was going to retire soon, but I want him to stick around a little bit longer. He's, I don't you may have not that have to tease it. He have another match like that. He's, uh, he, he's not Matt Hardy. I kind of he, He's booked to a certain <laughs> level. He has a certain cachet. I care about the guy. He's still, I want he's to... still upper card, wouldn't you say? I would, yeah, I would man, say he's upper middle. Yeah, man. Yeah, so... I mean, he's up there. I mean, here, here's the thing. If, if Brock Lesnar wasn't champion and they needed – someone to be in that title picture let's say it was seth ross as the world champion let's say and they decided to throw us uh, uh ray mysterio as one of the challengers he's a believable challenger regardless of if he hasn't had a title yeah it's true very true Can't say the same for matt hardy yeah no absolutely not no unfortunately now matt hardy looks like it hurts to walk at times yeah i need uh, him to yeah, yeah yeah um uh, but someone who i'm glad got up their seat and helped out ray after the match was my boy umberto Carrillo making his triumphant return to his Monday triumphant night. return to yeah. a response from nobody like like an audience of two 
Like Vince, <laughs> maybe hey, you know what? Stop the it, kid that it. the kid that stood next to him was <laughs> like that kid was probably just more elated. Than a wrestler was standing next to him the whole show. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, Umberto Carrillo, I'm all actually about him. I like Umberto. I have I have I have really high hopes for that kid. WWE, that's that's one demo like not one demographic. That's one area that they could highly improve on is getting young guys and girls on the main roster shows because you have your young and up and coming talent most of them coming out of nxt are already in their 30s though that's your right. young talent is already 30 years old and that's one thing that aew has over wwe is they are attempting to build up these people who are jesus younger than you i would say right yeah um, yeah that's what i'm saying man it, it, you know you know what that means though is it's all over vince for us it's all over, man. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like uh, came to terms with that when uh, when I started seeing NBA players get drafted to the league that were younger than me, and I'm like, "Geez, no, yeah, like, maybe I'm not going pro." Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not happening. Well, once I hit 25, I kind of figured this shit. Like, no. I can't have a DDP running the NBA. You know, <laughs> I can't come in when I'm 39 and just like dominate. You know, take over, be world champ. Picture you but, in the stands, drunk, running out, giving diamond cutters. <laughs> hey man, hey, you know what? I would pay to see that. It's I would pay to see me. just like, hey man, if LeBron James just decides tomorrow he just wants to dole out diamond cutters, I'm for it. <laughs> I'm for it. Gets yeah. into a fight, it's like diamond cutter out of nowhere. Yeah man, that'd, um, be, that'd be way more entertaining than our final segment of the night: the Bobby um, Lashley and Lana match facing off against Rusev and Liv Morgan. I'm going to let you explain to me why I should care about this. Why should I even care about this feud anymore? There's... I'm having a hard time. Uh, I'd have a hard time explaining this to you because I even tweeted out. I was like, "Well, that was a giant waste of time," like, because I think they came. The show started off like the whole segment started off with like seven minutes, like to, like till the end of the show. Then they go cuts the commercial. Then Liv Morgan doesn't get her own entrance, which like you're building up this huge return for Liv Morgan, and she doesn't even get her own entrance, like. Like I get it, maybe you're. She's a prop. On time. She's a prop in the feud. She's not. And I hate that. Yeah, and I hate that prop, because man. they were hyping up this big return for her. And she, here's the thing: she looks amazing. Like out of all of them, she's the only one that feels fresh. The only one that I'm invested in right now. Even with Rusev, at this point, I don't care about Rusev anymore because they did the whole. Because we were we were speaking about this how Sebastian would try to like justify how like well the Rusev they chance her over the minute you see Bobby Lashley and Lana they're booing them and you hear Rusev they. But like there would have been other avenues to take to get the same result that you got right now. I felt like they took the most uh, murkiest and like worst way to get there. And then you add Liv Morgan, you make it more convoluted. You make it so it. like Lana was like a lesbian during like Rusev's like marriage. But here's yeah. here's here's my here's my question: If <laughs> yeah. just in just in feud logic alone. Let's strip away the cringe and all the stuff like that. Let's just look at it as it as what it is, and it's a feud. Right. At this point, how does Rusev win the feud? Doesn't. You don't, right? Because in a feud, you have a couple ways. You you guys trade wins and losses back and forth, and then you have a big vic the big victory, blow up victory in the end, declares mm -hmm. the winner. At this point, Rusev has eight losses for what feels like four months straight. You can't just have this guy get one win and then bam, Rusev had, wins the right. feud. He's only had one win. I don't even. And here's the thing. But I don't he, remember when even it if was. it's a blow off match, even if it's a blow off match, say say they schedule themselves uh, Hell in the Cell match at Royal Rumble and Rusev wins. Did he really win the feud? He got his no. ass beat for four months straight and then he wins a gimmick match. You know what I mean? It doesn't make him yeah. look like he comes out a winner. Or do also, you do do you do the like, best of seven? Do you have Rusev now go on a four month squash match of Bobby Lashley? It, there's no there's no way for the face to win here. There's no yeah, way. Yeah, even in that scenario where like all of a sudden now Rusev goes on the roll, it's like, why do I care now? Yeah. At this point, you just like, at this point, I want them to move mm -hmm. on and get out of that whole situation and. Even going into Liv Morgan, they've kind of like, look, she's she's out there looking great. By the way, she's doing the best. She's out there making. You said it right. Look. She does look fresh. She looks fresh and new. Doesn't look like a product of 2017. Like out of all of them, she looks like the one that's like really taking this moment and trying to seize it and use the mo uh, 
do the best she can with it. I feel like she may not like. Here's the thing: there was no backstory to them having any kind of relationship, and she went on Twitter to try to personally try to push that narrative. She pulled out receipts with her and Lana almost kissy, like one of those like it, like pictures that like some girls take where yeah, they like they're, yeah. they're almost kissing their friends and stuff. It's like she came out with receipts. Where can like, I find those again? Stupid. Nah. <laughs> there are plenty of sites for you that <laughs> there are plenty of sites for that um but it's just one of those things where it's like it's disappointing because i kind of was like they were building up like i was saying they were building up Liv morgan this match was like less than seven minutes then again another bobby lashley lana win and for what like i didn't i didn't get it like Liv morgan has looked like a chump in terms of like She's came out. She went ahead and like confronted Lana at the wedding. Then she got her ass whipped by Lana. Then she came back and somehow stood tall. Fine. Then the next week, she I don't think she does anything. She does like backstage stuff. She does another backstage stuff. She tries to help Rusev out last week, and she gets like a drink thrown in her face and tossed into the barricade. And then this and then after that great promo she had last week. No, where I she's saw like, I saw what the purpose of that was, and that was for the slow mo highlight reel for this week. Like that's all that drink in the face was for, cause they 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 pinned on that several times. I was like, oh Jesus, okay, now I get it, I get yeah. it now. Uh, it's the same thing with her in the bath. Something about something about uh, having her, uh, let's say let's say doused, just cause I okay, want to avoid so any buzzwords. Again, I think like where this goes is. Hopefully, uh, both Liv Morgan and Lana are in the Women's Rumble, and we know Lashley and uh, Rusev are in there. Hopefully, this leads to both Rusev and Liv Morgan tossing out their respective rival in the Rumble and getting a one kind of comeuppance over them. But even Bobby Lashley was kind of like making the, case, the same case that we were last week when after he beat Rusev, Lana's like, no, I want a tag match with, uh, with Liv Morgan and Rusev. And Bobby Lashley's like, why? I already beat him. I, like even Bobby yeah. Lashley was saying that last week. He's like, well, I already beat him. Why do I have to keep wrestling? Him? This is this is gonna make Rusev look bad. Liv may get out of this okay, just because she's so fresh into it. Uh, the only person I could see looking good is like Lashley, just casting Lana aside. Like this is oh, all. I this is this is effing stupid. I'm done with this. I'm done with all you guys. You all deserve each other. I'm out. Like just peace. I'm out. And how funny would it be if like two years from now? Like Rusev and Lana are back together. Oh, How? I, guarantee, I guarantee it's gonna happen. Like Rusev's gonna share a kiss with Liv Morgan, and that's what's gonna bring Lana no, back. Stop it. Stop that's, it. I mean, look. If I told you several months ago Lana's gonna make out with Bobby Lashley, you would have said the same thing. They just they're gonna do it. They they love this the cringy sex stuff. They're gonna that's do. That's all. That's all. Paul Heyman, man. I, he has like a like a soft spot for this kind of stuff. Cause when he was running SmackDown, remember he did the whole like uh, Tori Wilson's dad with HLA Ray. and yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Like Paul My... Heyman, even like, you go back to ECW <laughs> and he had some sketchy stuff where like supposedly like like Beulah McKillicuddy was Tommy Dreamer's ex girlfriend back in the day, but she cheated on him with Raven, and then now like. Her son is actually Raven. So I don't know. I'm making stuff up as I go along, but it sounds like some shit didn't come sounds up with like it. Day. Yeah. Oh, so man. it's it's just it's one of those things where like as good as Raw has been, mm-hmm. like Paul Heyman isn't the best and he's gonna like miss on certain stuff. Like cause he's missing on this Lana stuff. Cause you and I were both for it. We both were yeah. enjoying it. I was and man. then it just turned south and it just went south. It really did. I <laughs> God dang, he did too. There's glimpses of cool stuff like uh, like Rusev like two weeks ago. It's like, hey guys, it's me, Rusev from Rusev Day. Like it's little, <laughs> little stuff like that. <laughs> that still he's, gets me. Man. <laughs> it, it, here's the thing: Sebastian's like, oh well, you know, it's work. You know, they, they, Rusev's getting over. But look, look at Rusev, man. The guy gets over on his like personality alone. Just Dude, let him be himself. I, as much as I love Sebastian, I love him. I'm not saying he is a full on. But he reminds me of a contrarian. Like, this dude, <laughs> he likes to find the arguments to um, to to discredit popular belief and popular opinion. Like, I swear, man. I love, like, I love it because now, like, I, he does it so often that I can tell when he's about to do it. He's like, no, oh, no, no. Hold on. Hold yeah, on. I know, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, oh. And we're done. Oh, I'm bashing Seb. I love Seb, but yeah, man, no, you, it's... Like, sometimes it's like Seb, this is shit. Agree with me. You know it's shit. Just, stop it's it. Just admit it. Just please. Just admit it. Just stop fighting it. the fight that nobody wants you to fight. You were. 
<laughs> oh man but, uh, um, anyway, that was raw right like, that was raw no that was it man that was it i mean we may miss like a backstage segment here or there but i mean that was that was raw in a nutshell that was your go home show leading us into royal rumble okay um, uh what, what's the point because i saw a lot of people bring this up and it's a fair point uh why haven't they been building up the women's Royal Rumble? There has been zero build to that women's Rumble. Because because uh, Ron does not announce for it. But no, here's the thing: she wasn't announced for the other two. But she was. She had already debuted. She had already debuted. It was kind of like a known thing she'd be in it. No, she wasn't in either Rumble. She That's wasn't in the she first wasn't. Rumble. She was like the surprise appearance at the end of the Rumble. It was the hype of the first ever women's Rumble last year. They did yeah, a it was job it was. Year. But last year she was champion, so she wasn't she wasn't put in the rumble. Yeah, it's just she, she debuted at Rumble, went to Mania for the mixed tag, mm-hmm. year long run. What'd she do at Won Royal, the title what'd she, at SummerSlam? What'd she do at the second Royal Rumble? That she was, the second Royal she defended against Sasha. That's right. Okay. Yeah, because she won the title at uh at, at SummerSlam and then she defended at she did the whole Charlotte match at Survivor Series and then she faced off against Sasha Banks for the raw title at uh Rumble. Yeah, it's, it's just, just they don't give a damn. Like the, the the only thing about the Royal Rumble, the women's rumble that they care about is the fact that Charlotte's in it. That's it. Um, Dude, that, that's the only development. Is Charlotte's the only one Charlotte's that's been it. talking about the Rumble, and then Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss saying that, yeah, we're both in the Rumble, and then Nikki, like, I'm gonna win regardless. You know, like maybe they're te- teasing some kind of tension and split between the two of them there at the Rumble. But it's like, as of right now, there's only four people confirmed: Sarah Logan, Charlotte Flair, uh, Alexa Bliss, and Nikki Cross. It's funny it's you, like, you just said that, and I, I'm on Twitter right now, and literally the first post that pops up is uh, from this Aaron Walker uh, Gallagher lad '95. He says, "Has WWE forgot the Women's Royal Rumble this year? Been zero build. They need to start. Ser- they seriously need to acknowledge it and do some build on Smack. How do you build on one show? How do you build on one show? Like you know, and you know what I think it is? is they didn't know what they were going to do because I now think I, still think, I, I don't even know if they still know what they want to do." Man, they just they they just calling it as they see it, man. I feel like they're they were kind of hoping that Ronda would come back, and if Ronda comes back, that she'd be the winner. But if she doesn't come back, then maybe they'll go with the Shayna route. Now, I feel like they legit don't know. They could go with the Sasha Banks winning, and then here's the thing: you could have done a little subtle things like Sasha Banks is saying that she's going to be in the Rumble and teasing, "Yeah, I'm going to chant, going to win the Royal Rumble." But like in the background, you see Bailey like. Uh, kind of like the Batista Triple H stuff. It's like, yeah, win the Rumble, but face, you know, Becky Lynch. Don't face me, you know. Kind yeah. of thing where she tries to sends her off. And from all from all reports, from what I'm hearing, I mean, I'm no insider by any means, but but from what I've been hearing and seeing online is that they're leaning towards Sasha Banks and Bailey for the title at WrestleMania, which they should do. Uh, they, they should, should totally do that. Do. Yeah, because here's that. the thing: there's do no that. big name in terms of uh, unless Naomi comes back tomorrow. There's no big name on SmackDown that isn't Sasha Banks and Bailey that can be put into a singles match for the title. Like, Lacey Evans is fine. She's going to get her title shot at Royal Rumble, but she's not a big enough name to warrant her having a singles match. She can be involved in a multi-person match. Like, there's the Fatal 4 match. I'm all for Lacey Evans to be in there. She's not a big enough name. I don't think there is the overwhelming majority of the WrestleMania crowd and audience is going to care. Rob's going to care. Uh, yeah. That one weird dude that's a uh, weird Lacey Evans stand account is going to care. Um, <laughs> but not, for the overwhelming majority is going to care. They'd rather see uh, Sasha Banks or Bailey. Yeah, no, it's true, man. It's true. Um, but there's, yeah, man, there's a, uh, I don't know. I don't know. At this point, I honestly forgot there was one. I, I like the Royal Rumble regardless. I I don't even need Bill to enjoy the Rumble. <laughs> yeah, but... yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. But it's just one of those things where it's like, it kind of sucks. That like It does. They, at least you could do is just do a backstage semi- segment where like Carmella's like, I'm entering the Royal Rumble. Or they do like one of those like half ass where it's like, they do like a slideshow of like three women that are announcing they're in the Rumble. You know, they go from like, like picture to picture to picture and they're like yeah i'm in the rumble <laughs> or at least you know do something on twitter you know we'll do see. something something um but i guess i guess we'll, we'll go ahead and stop the show here man we got a, we got a lot of stuff to shoot this week um yeah. you guys if you're not already aware uh we have a busy week this is crunch week for us uh make sure you tune in wednesday when we're gonna do both of course nxt and aew uh, vince i think we're gonna be on nxt together maybe um, if Jay doesn't get any better than yet, probably. Probably. Um, <laughs> we love you, Jay, but dude, 
just just heads give us a heads up man jesus uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what do we do with Thursday? We're not shooting anything. Friday, um, we're shooting both SmackDown. I might, I might switch things up. I'm going to talk to the guys and see what works best for them. Since most of the Royal Rumble build has like has been mostly SmackDown matches, I doubt they add another SmackDown match to the Royal Rumble. I don't think there's going to be much that's going to be added to the Rumble, so I maybe can do predictions Thursday night. Okay, so that's stuff that's not really needed for the show, but all right. Well, so Thursday or Friday, we'll shoot predictions. <laughs> And um, Saturday, we got, of course, look out for our throwback episode, Royal Rumble 2000. That's going to be hosted by Jay. Oh, God. Um, so that might go up in a week or two. And then <laughs> Sunday, of course. Oh, and Saturday night, we're doing Worlds Collide. Sunday, Which I'm surprised you guys are doing. That came out of oh, nowhere. I didn't hell think yeah, you guys doing were doing it. Worlds Collide. Hell yeah. It's an NXT show. Of course I'm doing it. Um, and then Sunday, of course, is the Royal Rumble. Boy, oh boy, it's going to be a busy week for us here at the Smack Draw Podcast. Um, once again, do not forget, hit us up in the comments on Twitter. How should we punish Vince when we get to 100 subscribers? Stop it. We need Stop to drive it. that home, okay? Technically, no, technically, you should be the one with the punishment because you're the one that's so insistent on getting to 100 subs. And you're the, you're the face of this franchise, so you have to set the example. So that, that's, no, that's all on you, buddy, man. Dude, I'm accepting the reward. <laughs> Your it. ass is good. We're going to uh, make you. Hey, one, one let us let us know if you want us to do giveaways. Uh, we've got, I've been considering doing giveaways for wrestling cards. Uh, Vince looks like he's got a collection of Funko Pops. We can probably start uh, offering yeah, to our listeners. Uh, I have, I think, a Braun Strowman and a Page and Hulk Hogan one that I don't care for anymore. And I'd be more than happy to <laughs> give them away. I was just trying to troll you, man. That's pretty cool. No, good for you, Vince. Uh, legit. Yeah, no, hey man, I'm down for the cause. You know, like I have a here's the thing. I ha- I I collect a couple wrestling shirts. I have a couple that are still sealed up. So, you know, I can always we could always do a giveaway for shirts. Maybe yeah. we could do a giveaway for the first ever Smack Garage the t shirt, you know, maybe, if you guys are into that. Maybe we'll band together and do a uh, big gift giveaway package. Maybe a Funko uh, Pop, a t shirt, and some cards, like a whole care package for Royal Rubble. We'll see. We'll save it for our Patreon when we get one. Yeah, right? There we go. <laughs> uh, uh, one final thing, though. Make sure you go, guys go ahead and download this uh, episode wherever you're listening to it because it helps out the show. It helps our helps our exposure. Uh, if you're on app, um, is it Apple Podcasts now? Because it's not iTunes anymore. I think it's Apple Podcasts now. Really? If you're on Apple Podcasts, uh, give it a five-star rating and leave a comment down below so people can find it. It helps the algorithm. So make sure you do that. Make sure you download the episode. We so have that it, the algorithm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have the <laughs> we have the formula. But uh, how about the show? If you do support us, uh, we just saw last week you guys uh, a number of you guys went ahead and downloaded. And we do appreciate that. Thank you, Thank so you. much. And also on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe, like yes. button, all that good stuff. Please, please, please. Like, I hope you guys like the new format. We're trying some different stuff. We're trying to. I am persistently. Uh, harassing all of my crew members to get our ugly mugs on camera for you YouTubers because I I've heard the complaints you guys don't want slideshows you want to see the presenters we're working on it man but um of course like Vince said thank you so much you guys honestly and then until next time man you guys you have a good one later guys